Right, so I'm gonna be making up a spit for this car, which has got boltable plates for the front and rear removable crash sections. That's the rear there and the front two there, they're just four bolt pattern. So they're both at different heights from the ground. So we're gonna need some sort of adjustability to allow the, the spit to go up and down so we can balance the car. So a few little sketches that I've just planned out. This may change along the way somewhat, but basically I'm gonna have box section running down, caster wheels, box section across the bottom, triangulate all that, shaft through the middle, Probably a little bit over-engineered, but we're gonna have a top plate with a block bearing, a bit of 45 mil roll cage tube with some gussets around it to create a face plate. And I'm gonna put several holes, don't know how many, a few up and down the face plate. So then we can actually make each bumper bar for any car, because I've got the PS to do as well, plus any other cars that we do. I'm not needed one in 10 years, but you know, if you've got it, you might use it. So yeah, we'll make the bumper plates up for this car. And then obviously I'll have to make bumper plates up for the, the other car as well. I just, uh, I was thinking about doing a little disc with some holes in it so you can pin it in, but we'll see about that. I did think about doing a sliding center bar so you could adjust the height. So then, you know, I mean, it's probably gonna have a little bit of wobble in it and things though. Like. I should have enough scrap material lying around to do most of this. We've got all this box section here, which can go into it. We are sitting right about two mil. So two mil wall thickness, which should be ample. And I've got plenty of scrap metal on the plasma CNC. So we should be able to make up some nice shapes um, for that rotational disc with the pins in it, if we decide to go that way, but at least the plate for the block, uh, block bearing. So measuring from the center of the vehicle out to the edge, that's 110. So we'll have that much clearance. Now this car is quite wide, but I may add some more on. So we've got 110 with 200 clear. I'll go and measure the PS and then we'll see what numbers we come up with. I think I'm gonna go for 1400 and then it will give me plenty of clearance. We won't be getting anywhere near it. So if you say 1400 from ground up to the pivot point, that will give me plenty of clearance around the car to spin it without a problem. So yeah, what we've ended up with is the width of 1400, that's for the actual unit. Bring in this one. That's for the total width of this. I think 1400 is plenty. Um, it's 1400 high as well. And then the other measurements are obviously a 70 by 40 box or 40 by 70 in this case, as well I've written it. And the cast is 125 mil. So I'll work out some sizings. I'll start to get these cut up and we should end up with some kind of frame. Just got them cut out on the bandsaw and we've basically ended up with 1260 through the center and 800 on the lengths. So there's the uh, quick mock-up. I don't think that's too bad, actually. Um, I've done it so it kind of overhangs. Dunk. Yeah, it'll overhang slightly. So you'll have, I don't know, like five mil on here. I've cut them both at 28 degrees, both ends, so I can have a flat plate on there. I don't think I'm gonna bother with a bar down the middle. I just don't think it's necessary looking at it now. Just throwing it on the ramp. So we're gonna basically make sure that this is at a right angle to the base, and I know this ramp's flat. So I'm just gonna use a framing square because this isn't like super accuracy. And we can see it's actually a little bit out. Um, so I'm gonna put basically a tack this side, tack there, so they're both on this side. And once it's tacked, I'll then just lean it in the right direction, tack the other side, and we should be square enough. So I flicked it upside down to get in that V get that weld in there. Considering what this is doing, I haven't gone for pretty welding, I've gone for get it in there and get it welded. So I'm just about to start drawing up the mounting plate, which is obviously gonna rotate on the jig and it's got to mount that frame too that comes off. Now, there's a couple of things to take into account. One, the height difference between the front and the rear, which is 100 mil in this case. 
And also we want the adjustability so we can get the center of gravity of the car. So I'm thinking this is gonna be quite a bit higher because you've got quite a lot of roll cage up the top and subframes are gonna be off. So there's gonna be very little weight. Subframes, tank, gearbox, drive shafts, engine, all out. I reckon there's gonna be more weight up the top than there is down the bottom but we will find out but we've got to make this plate large enough that we can offset ideally i just want to make these straight obviously you could offset them and i might need to but ideally i don't want to so if we make the plate big enough that we can offset the height from the ground and then potentially the height of the um the center of gravity so this is basically the shape now um we've got this is 300 by 500, this square. And then we've got the lockout wheel, was gonna be separate, now incorporated. Um, and then hull centers, we've got about 100 million each direction. All right, so that's 400 by 500. I've got a 50 mil radius around the outside just to make it look a bit prettier. This is obviously a, well, was a 300 mil circle. I think the hull centers on the circles are 260, something like that. Take a quick look. Yeah, 260. Um, there's 16 holes, I think. These are set 40 mil apart. So we've got a decent height in each direction, 160. I'm hoping that's gonna get us real close. So I'm just gonna measure out the rear brackets and the bearings have just came. Now I didn't order self-aligning bearings, but unless that's a very bent bearing, that is a self-aligning bearing. Um, I think these were like 17 quid each so not exactly breaking the bank and there's no reason they won't take the weight uh, so we've got the left one is the rear plate and the right one is the front plate i'll double them up and then uh, we'll get them cut out of five mil as well i'm going to put that exactly in the center make up a plate for that five mil again so there's the bearing mounting plate Another piece of the puzzle has just arrived and they fit on there quite nicely. Two slivers are weld each corner. So that's the four mounting brackets for the shell. Gotta love CNC. And then the other bearing block mount. So those are those little bits done. So I've got the wheels welded on, had to grind off some of that zinc coating on there. But again, I think it was 20 quid a set, so it's 40 quid there. Bearings were 20 quid each, they're on now. I've got a bit of roll cage tube in there. So ready to cut out the lockout plate. Now I've made this circle uh, 300 um, for the whole centers, just because on the actual unit, the center distance from the edge here, I think 260 brought it about there, which is doable because I was going to put the lockout pin on the inside. But I think if I can just pull it away, give me a bit more clearance and obviously leave a point from there to there, it's going to hold the car easier. So it just makes it easier. Just thrown in some bars to get this complete. And I've also welded on the bit of tube obviously that goes through the block bearing and then this is our face plate to meet up to the rear bar now i was going to put two holes through there but i don't think that's going to be strong enough and i don't obviously like one single bolt so i'm actually going to make a plate up that's going to weld onto this and then that'll obviously go straight onto them so i've got the plates welded on now so we'll lift this up place it on there and just see how it looks so that's it there at the extreme of that height and that's the extreme of the other height there so I'm hoping that will hopefully get it somewhere around the center of gravity. May need some modification, but if it doesn't, I'm just gonna leave this one and we'll lock it in with the pin. Just wanted to do a little strength test and managed to get the whole back of the car off the ground. That is fully, if not shaking, but fully off the ground. So without the subframe, I think we're good. So I finally got both the plates on the front. Everything's ready to go. I've got the car halfway up. It's looking pretty smart. Let's see if it works, because it might not.
So final piece of the puzzle there, I've just welded on a bit of angle, put that pin in, and that obviously then just drops in each one, no problem. So we'll give it a spin and see what happens. We've uh, maxed out the adjustability to get it as basically low as possible on the spit. But now I've stripped out the doors and the fuel tank, the steering column, pedal box and stuff like that. Actually, it's pretty well balanced. Being put to use correctly, just going to start sandblasting in our custom made safe area. Thanks for watching guys and if, uh, if you want these plates made up or anything, just give us an email and uh, we can get the price sorted out and, and sent out to you. Thanks for watching guys, if you like the video give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, subscribe, hit that bell and get the notifications. You can also check us out on Facebook, the link's going to be in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.